Hello everyone, uh, this game was a suggestion from a subscriber and uh, not only is it an interesting game, it features one of my favorite openings, the Evans Gambit, so of course I agreed to do it. Uh, but before I show you the game, uh, I just want to tell you, I put a link in the description below, uh, it's a link to the video I made uh, to thank everyone for my channel reaching 1000 subscribers. I'm pretty sure most of you haven't seen that video. And uh, it's a pretty cool Tal game, uh, so you know uh, it, it will give you a chance to see uh, how my channel looked like when I had 1,000 subscribers and how it looks now. So I I, I was pretty surprised uh, when I saw this video yesterday. So you know uh, you're probably not going to enjoy the video, but uh, it's definitely a great Tal game. Uh, it's called uh, Not Bad for a Dead Man. But okay, that being said, uh, here we have a game that uh, people are referring to as the Brazilian Immortal. It was played by uh, uh, Joao Caldas Viana, one of the greatest Brazilian players uh, from the end of the 19th century, and uh, he was well known throughout Europe uh, for his romantic style and plenty of sacrifices. Uh, and he's playing against Augusto Silvestre Paez de Barros. I'm pretty sure I pronounced that uh, wrong, but uh, okay. Uh, and uh, like I said, it's the Evans Gambit and a lot of people have analyzed this game, a lot of engines have analyzed this game. And like many of the games from the ro Romantic era, I mean, engines do find refutations, uh, I mean, even in immortal games of Adolf Anderson and Paul Morphy. Uh, but that is no reason for us not to enjoy them. So let's see the game. Uh, Caldas Viana has the white pieces and he plays e4. We have e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, bishop to c4, and the bishop to c5. Uh, so uh, we have the Italian game, uh, the gioco piano, or is it gioco, I'm not really sure. And here we have b4, the, en the Evans gambit, this time for real. Uh, bishop captures on b4, and maybe some of you have seen the game uh, between Grishchuk and Carlsen. Uh, Grishchuk played the Evans gambit against Carlsen, and Carlsen refused the gambit with uh, bishop to b6. Uh, and uh, ended up losing that game, so you know it's not that easy uh, to uh, to refuse the Evans Gambit. You know, best go by that old Capablanca saying uh, that gambits are refuted by accepting them. So we have uh, Bishop captures on b4 and c3. That's the idea of the Evans Gambit, uh, giving up the b pawn to to gain control of the center. Uh, we have bishop to a5. Black has some more options here. He can play bishop to c5. He can play bishop to e7. Uh, you know. It depends, it's a personal preference. Uh, so bishop to a5, and now d4. Uh, e captures on d4, we have castles, and d6. Uh, it's, it, it is possible to capture the pawn on c3, but uh, you will very rarely see anyone who is willing to play the Evans Gambit with the black pieces to grab the third pawn. Uh, because after you grab the third pawn, uh, then after queen to b3, attacking f7, uh, queen to f6 defending, bishop to g5 attacking the queen, uh, queen to g6, knight captures on c3, uh, black is, uh, white is fully developed and uh, if you enjoy a passive position like this, you know, you might enjoy playing this with black, but uh, uh, knight, knight to d5 is in the air, you know, the rooks are ready to jump into the game, black will probably have to give up the bishop here, and after queen captures, it's a... Uh, you know, I, I don't know, uh, some people enjoy this position for white, some enjoy it for black, so uh, see, uh, see uh, which fits you better. Uh, but okay, in the game after castles, d6 was played. Uh, we have queen to b3, now eyeing the f7 pawn, queen to f6 defending, and e5 now. Uh, attacking the queen and threatening to open up the e-file for the rook. Uh, so d captures on e5, and we have rook to e1. Now threatening uh, to grab this pawn with knight captures and after knight captures push f4 uh, bishop to d7 and we have a bishop to g5 now uh, with an attack on the queen uh, queen to f5 and now comes knight captures on e5 uh, you can't uh, capture the hanging bishop here because uh, if you capture a bishop uh, you get knight captures on f7 with check uh, the knight is defended from the bishop on c4 so after queen to e7 you lose the queen uh, and the rook, so this would be, this isn't possible for black. So after knight captures on e5, knight captures on e5 was played, and now f4, uh, defending the bishop and threatening to capture the knight. Uh, f6 now, and this is by far the best move uh, uh, for black. Uh, now not capturing the knight, but queen captures on b7, threatening to capture the rook on a8. Uh, rook to d8, and we have f captures on e5. 
uh, f captures and g5 of course uh, and now rook to f1 uh, e6 might seem like an interesting idea although after bishop to a4 white has nothing here he has no way of continuing any any kind of an attack uh, so after f captures on g5 rook to f1 uh, attacking the queen and queen captures on e5 was played and this was actually the move that gave white the advantage after this rook to f1 move uh, black's best bet is actually to capture the rook with the queen rook uh, queen captures rook on f1 uh, and after bishop captures bishop to b6 and uh, and black is okay here uh, white does have a rook and a piece for the queen uh, sorry black has and uh, he has a couple of more extra pawns but it uh, it would be very hard for white to play this uh, I mean, black will develop very soon with moves like knight e7 castles, and uh, white still has to develop his rook, his knight, and the queen on b7 isn't really a great piece. Uh, but uh, in the game after rook f1, queen captures on e5 was played. Uh, and now white uh, does get some initiative. Knight to d2. Now we have knight to e7, uh, rook now to e1, as, uh, well, if knight to e7 wasn't played, rook to e1 would uh, pin the queen. So knight to e7, we have rook 8 to e1 now attacking the queen, queen to c5, uh, and bishop to f7 with check now, king to f8 and bishop to g6. And here black uh, replies with bishop to f5. Unfortunately uh, king to g8 is impossible. If you play king to g8 you get queen b3 uh, and you're getting checkmated. Uh, you have to block this uh, queen d5, queen captures, knight captures, and now bishop to f7, check, king f8, bishop captures on d5 with check, uh, the rooks are occupying the files, uh, the king has nowhere to go, so bishop has to block, and rook captures on f5, this is checkmate. So after bishop to g6, check, bishop to f5 was played, uh, bishop captures on f5, knight captures on f5, and now knight to e4, uh, attacking the queen, and uh, also uh, trying to kick the queen away from the defense of the knight uh, on f5. And here we have another uh, critical position. Uh, here black played queen to b6. Uh, what black could have played uh, was queen to d5. Uh, and after something like uh, after something like queen captures on d5 and rook captures, okay, you can win back the piece with the g4. Uh, but uh, black doesn't mind after d captures on c3, rook captures, rook captures, and g captures, and king to f7. Uh, white did win back the piece, but black has too many pawns, and this c3 pawn is a monster. So this wouldn't really go in white's favor. So after queen to d5, white would probably have to play something like rook captures on f5 with check. Uh, but after queen captures and rook to f1, black can calmly capture this rook. Queen captures and after king captures, d captures on c3, and uh, uh, black definitely has compensation for the queen here, although he still has to develop this rook. Uh, the problem is, uh, this rook is undeveloped, and uh, the king is uh, in an open board against the queen and the knight. So, probably black saw this, but he decided not to go for this. Uh, so, after knight e4, queen to b6 was played. Uh, here we have rook captures on f5 with check, uh, king to g8 and black thought okay I, I gave back the piece and now you know I'm just gonna trade queens and it's gonna be a nice nice winning end game for me uh, but uh, he missed this move or or, or so he thought uh, knight to d6 and what is this doing well first of all it's defending the queen here uh, and uh, what, what do you play here as black and this is uh, the position that was analyzed by many players by many great players uh, by even more engines and uh, you know there are all sorts of conclusions uh, but uh, I'm just going to show you what what I think is is important uh, in this position black played d captures on c3 uh, which was a mistake uh, what black sh what black should have played is queen captures on b7 uh, and after knight captures bishop captures on c3 and uh, if you play something like rook to e7, uh, you get rook c8, and after rook captures on g5, d3, now the bishop is protecting g7, uh, and after something like rook to d5, d2, and black is perfectly fine here. Uh, there, there is nothing uh, for him to, you know, worry. Uh, 
okay, maybe rook e3, but then bishop to f6, and the rook still can't capture the d2 pawn because uh, bishop to g4 will uh, will pin the rook. So th this would definitely be okay for black. But after this knight to d6 move, black played d captures on c3, uh, checking the white king. We have king to h1, and now h6 was played. And in this position, uh, unfortunately, black doesn't have queen captures on b7 anymore. If queen captures on b7 now, uh, then after knight captures on b7 and c2, uh, this does come with an attack on the rook on e1. Uh, but now, after knight captures on e5, on a5, uh, getting rid of the bishop uh, and the rook to d1, white is defending this uh, perfectly with uh, rook f to f1. So, uh, in this position, queen captures on b7 wasn't possible. So, black tried h6, uh, and this is where white now gets uh, everything he ever wanted. Uh, white's idea is he wants to get his queen from b7 uh, to, uh, to e6. He wants to check <laughs> the black king uh, with the queen from e6, and how does he do this? Uh, well, it's a, it's a pretty cool maneuver. He plays uh, queen to d5 with check. Uh, king has only one move uh, king to h7 and now he plays a uh, queen to e4 uh, threatening all sorts of uh, nasty discoveries after this rook moves uh, of course you can't play g6 uh, because after the simple rook f7 check king g8 and queen captures on g6 this is checkmate uh, so after this queen to e4 move king has to go back to g8 and now queen to e6 check check and uh, white accomplished what he wanted to he checked the, the black king with the queen on e6 uh, king to h7, and now the, the brilliant move, uh, that's the reason uh, why white wanted his queen to check the king on e6, uh, rook to f6, and this is, uh, this is brilliant. Uh, you can't capture the rook, if you capture the rook, then the simple queen to f7 is checkmate, uh, and if you don't, if you play something like rook captures knight, or, or even queen captures knight, uh, then you get this uh, brilliant rook captures on h6 check. Uh, the king can't capture as the queen is protecting the rook. Uh, the g8 square is guarded by the queen, so you have to capture the rook. And after g captures on h6, uh, again, you get queen to f7 checkmate. So, after rook to f6, black tried rook h to f8, now making room for the king on h8. Uh, but uh, now this loses to a very simple tactic. Uh, queen to f5 check. Uh, the king goes to g8, and now rook captures on f8. Rook captures on f8, and now the great Brazilian finisher, uh, queen captures on f8. King captures, and rook to d8, checkmate. Uh, and a beautiful checkmate, uh, if I might say so. Uh, it wouldn't help a black if he played uh, king to h7. This also loses very quickly to queen to f5, check. Uh, g6, uh, rook to e7, check, uh, king h8 and queen to c8, this is also checkmate. So yeah, uh, unfortunately uh, for black uh, there was no defense, uh, what, whatever he played. So yeah, uh, that's the game, this is the game many many refer to as the Brazilian Immortal, I do hope you enjoyed it, uh, I would like to thank... Uh, uh, hmm... This is uh, I I've, I forgot to I forgot to update my interface, uh, so I didn't uh, include the latest donations uh, uh, in the video. But uh, I will I will do it uh, in the next video, uh, surely. Uh, so yeah, uh, like I said, uh, I do hope you enjoyed it and uh, do check uh, do check the video. Uh, I put in uh, a link in the description below. Uh, as usual, you can check to all my previous videos here. Uh, thank you all for watching and uh, I will see you soon.